Professional wrestling's old policy of never breaking the fourth wall has given us some fascinating stories, but the most interesting is probably by far the Ric Flair plane crash. Professional wrestling has a code of silence called kayfabe. Kayfabe is the agreement that you will never allow the audience to know that what happens in the ring might be scripted or choreographed in any way. If you and one of your friends are deadly rivals inside the ring, you should never be seen being friendly outside of it. So it's October 4th, 1975. We've got Johnny Valentine, Ric Flair, Bob Bruggers, Tim Woods, and David Crockett all squeezed into a Cessna 310 from Charlotte to Wilmington, North Carolina. The passengers had been distributed throughout the plane as if they weighed as much as normal people, but they were professional wrestlers. As a result, the pilot had had to jettison some fuel simply to get off the ground. The aircraft was a twin engine and could come in on only one engine, each engine having its own fuel tank. But as they came down to a thousand feet for their final approach, the pilot switched to his reserve tank, which was the one he had emptied. Both engines were stopped and the aircraft fell out of the sky like a brick. The pilot did manage to bring the Cessna into a stall before it hit the ground, so they only hit the ground at 85 to 100 miles per hour. When it was reported to the paper, they used Tim Wood's real name, George Wooden, in order to hide the fact that he was on the same airplane as someone he was supposed to be rivals with. It was so widely believed that when another wrestler showed up to visit Ric Flair in the hospital, the hospital attempted to have security restrain him because, in public, he was very bitter rivals with Flair and they were afraid that he was there to hurt him. They were, in fact, friends. There were obviously multiple bad injuries, the pilot was killed, Several of the wrestlers never wrestled again, but the part that people really focus on is the fact that in order to prove that he hadn't been on that plane, even though he had, only two weeks after the crash, Tim Woods was back in the ring. With the injured state that he was in, this is widely considered to be the bravest thing that anyone has ever done to keep KFOB intact.